Hey everybody, so uh, let's look at the following problem. I am going to turn off the source of glare as soon as I get the problem. So it's been a great day of new frictionless snow. Of course, I have to tell you that this snow is frictionless. Uh, Julie starts at the top of the 60 degree slope. So it looks kind of like that. Julie's over here, and I am a physicist, so uh, she just looks like a like a box. Uh, this height over here is 25 meters. Uh, they tell you that there's uh, a ramp over here. Looks kind of like that. Um, they tell you that there is an angle here of 90 degrees. Uh, they tell you that this height, not drawn to scale, actually will be kind of like we're here if you draw it to scale. That's it. We don't need to. Three meters. Mm. So this one is 60 degrees, 90. And that's. Uh, Pretty much it. So they ask you to calculate um, where she's going to land after going down the slope, up the ramp, and then it's going to create a parabola and it's going to land someplace over there. Um, you have to get the distance from the ramp to the landing point. The answer is 43 meters. So let's see, this problem actually has, um, it integrates a lot of concepts. Uh, first, you know that this is 90 degrees. This is at a normal 90 degree angle with the uh, surfaces of the slope and the ramp. That means that this angle has to be 90 degrees because um, you should know this, um, this uh, theorem. The sum of the angles inside a triangle is 180 degrees. And so in a square, you can draw two triangles. Each one is going to have 180. So the total is 360 degrees. Um, 90, 90, 90. Well, this one has to be 90 as well. So you know, this is a good one to know. If you have a pentagon, you pick any side and you draw your triangles, one, two, three. Five hundred and forty. If you have a hexagon, pick any side, any uh, corner to draw your triangles. And you know, so on. So that one is good to know. So now we draw this figure again, but bigger so that we can see everything. Oh, uh, that one, wrong angle. It's more like that. So this is 90. This is 60. This is a straight line. So it should be 180 degrees. You have 90 here, so it's 180 minus 150. You get your 30 degrees here. And if you have 
um, an angle in which you have a line at a 90 degree angle here, then this is going to be 30 degrees, which is the angle here. And this one's going to be 60 degrees, right? You can continue. OK, so we got that angle, 30 degrees. Um, so we have set up the problem almost. So the other thing that you need to know is this distance. Because what we're going to do is we're going to consider that all this potential, gravitational potential energy, is going to go into kinetic. At the very bottom, all of it is going to be converted into kinetic. So you can get the velocity, oh, this is squared. So you can get the velocity at the very bottom. Square root of 2 gh. We know h, we know g. Um, so we can get the velocity. Uh, but it's asking us for the distance between the end of the ramp and the landing point. So we need this distance. Um, for that, you have your triangle. This is 30 degrees. And this is 3 meters. And you can use the cosine function, right? So cosine theta is actually, never mind. Um, you don't want the cosine. You want the tangent. So tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. And uh, so opposite is 3 meters. Adjacent is what we want. So adjacent is opposite over tangent of uh, theta. In this case, uh, 30 degrees. And let's see if we can get the tangent of 30 um, without the calculator. So this is, um, you know, in physics, you don't have to memorize almost anything. But this is, if you're going to memorize something, this is a good candidate. because it's used so often. So this is the sine function. This is going to be uh, pi, or 180 degrees. This is 90, pi over 2. Um, actually, this is not drawn to scale. It's more like this. So the sine of 30 is 0 0.5. You know, the maximum is 1. And so it goes up a lot in the first 30. And then 60 degrees is um, square root of 3 over 2. So that's that gives you the 0 0.866 that we're all familiar with. But right now, we only need the sine of 30. OK. Um, the cosine, the sine starts at 0. The cosine starts uh, at 1. 
it looks like that. And oh, well, this is not very nice. More like that. So this is 90, 180. And for this one, it is uh, kind of the, the other way around. So at 30, uh, it is going to be square root of 2 over 2, so the same as sine 60. So I'm going to put it over here. And sine 60 over here, I mean cosine 60, is equal to sine 30, 0 0.5. The other one that is useful to remember is square root of 3 over 2. Um, sine 45 equals cosine 45 equals square root of 2 over 2. All right. Um, tangent of theta is sine theta over cosine theta. So sine 30 degrees, 0 0.5, cosine 30 degrees, oh, let's do the uh, 1 half. Uh, cosine 30, square root of 3 over 2. So 2 over 2 square root of 3. Tangent is 1, tangent uh, 30, 1 over square root of 3. Um, this is 1.7172. Hmm. <laughs> And I will have to use a calculator for that one. That sucks. Should have memorized that one as well. Zero point which is the same that I got for tangent 30. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna leave it over here. Tangent 30, 0 0.58. So adjacent, this distance is opposite three meters. divided by 0 0.58, uh, 5.2, right? OK, so. We pretty much got all the um, trigonometry part of the problem. So let's go on with the physics. We know what is going to be the velocity. At the very bottom, we know what is this angle. 
we know what is this distance. So we just need to calculate the range using, we can use the kinematic equations for that. And so when is it going to land over here? Well, We have this equation for x, and we have another equation for y. Right. So we can move the x naught to this side. So we get the delta x. Uh, we can do the same thing here, except that it's more clear if you leave it like that, because in y, you're at 0 or at any value. You can say 10, doesn't matter. You go up, and then you go down again. So y, the final value, is equal to the initial value. So if you move y minus y naught, that should be zero. Good. Um, these are the components, the component of the, the initial velocity that we got over here. Uh, so to get the x component, you multiply times cosine 30 or times sine 30 to get the y. We do not have an acceleration in the horizontal axis, right? So the velocity is constant in x. In y, we do have an acceleration is gravity. So we can get rid of this one over here. And this acceleration in y, we can just change it to g very well. Okay, so. We solve for, we need this time, right? So we need the time that it takes for the, uh, for Jamie or whatever her name was, uh, to go up and down. So we get that. Um, this g actually is pointing down. I forgot to put in a minus g when I removed the a, or when I replaced the a with the g. So these two go away. And you have a t over here. You have a t squared over here. So you can get rid of that t as well. And this is starting to look prettier. So you move the two over here, the g over here, and that's your time. Awesome. Okay, so let's put the time in there. I'm going to remove this, we don't need it anymore. So I just put the G down here. Nice, huh? So this is equal to V naught squared, this one and this one. Um, actually, to make it a little bit more clear, this part is V naught cosine uh, we have been talking about the same angle the whole time, so theta. The two, I'm going to put it over here. Um, this one is V naught sine theta over G. So 
So this delta x, which is sometimes called the range, is 2. Uh, actually, I'm going to put the v not squared, 2 cosine theta sine theta over g. 2 cosine theta sine theta is equal to, this is a trigonometric identity, sine of 2 theta. And let me just confirm that. So this is my favorite book. It's like uh, Mathematica uh, in the 50s. Right, so 2 sine a cosine a, which is what we have over here, equals sine of 2a, so sine of 2 theta. Good. So that's the range. And v naught is this dude, so um, two g h, and this is uh, to the one half, but this one is squared, so that's just one. Over g. So you can get rid of it. So you just have the two h sine of two theta. And you know, this is a pretty cool result. I will I will think. I will call it that way. So the range, this distance, you know, you still have to subtract the 5.2. But this distance only depends on the height, which is the potential energy that you put in, and the angle, because the range depends on the angle. But it is independent of the mass. So you could be, you know, a thousand kilograms or 10 grams, it will still be the same. Why? Well, if it's a thousand kilograms, you have to put more energy to lift it, right? So it has more energy. Um, it is not, I'm not saying that it's as easy to do it with a thousand kilograms than with 10 kilograms. But the range is the same. And it doesn't depend on uh, acceleration due to gravity either. So the range will be the same on Mars, on the moon, not the same. Uh, oh yeah, the same. There's no g. So you know, that's that's really cool. So this is fifty meters. Um, sine So theta is thirty degrees. Two theta is sixty. Um, we should know that one, as I said before, but okay, so that's um, 50 times 0.8066, and it's 43.3. meters. Hmm.
Well, that was the final answer for this problem. But how far horizontally is her touchdown point from the end of the ramp? Hmm, oh well. From, if you consider this to be the end of the ramp, then this 43. Um, if you consider this to be the end of the ramp, then it should be 43.3 minus 5.2. 31, 38.1 meters. So I'll just make that distinction in the in the problem set. But yeah, I think this is a pretty neat uh, problem. Okay, thank you.